I also want to share this video if you are a couple, if you are married, or if you are planning to get married. There are many ingredients that will help your marriage work, be um, very blissful. Uh, one of them is to learn communication. Everybody talks about communication, but there are bad communications and there are good communications. Communication should never be one-sided. Communication should not be abusive. It should not be just to say my, your mind. Communication means you have to think about it. You have to process what you're going to say before you start saying it. You have to reflect what the Bible says. You have to reflect if what you have to say is going to hurt the other person. Is it going to edify you? Is it going to edify the person? Is it going to bring joy and peace? Is it according to scripture? The Bible says do unto others the way you wish them to do to you. So wives husbands when you have something on your chest to pour out to your spouse how do you go about doing it do you just say it because it's in your mind and you don't care that how it pans out you don't know how you don't care how it comes across you wouldn't know whether to crush your spouse your children's spirit or the hearer we must learn the act of communicating as a couple you need to study each other you need to know their trigger so that when you start talking, when you start having a discussion, if it gets to a level where you know that your spouse is triggered, you step back, you stop talking. Maybe you have a break, you take a breather, maybe you go away and think about it. Also give time for each of you to calm down. Then you can resume your discussion. If you don't do that, you, you won't be communicating, you'll just be arguing. You'll just be shouting at each other. But the ability to learn how to communicate, the communication is two ways. You speak, the other person gives the person time to listen, to reflect, and if possible, respond. And not everybody wants to respond immediately. Especially wives, we are impatient. You speak to your husband, you expect answer immediately. Men may not be like that. No, most men are not like that except the loquacious ones, the talkative ones, who speak even more than their wives. So those ones will just jump on the topic and even overshadow the woman. Now maybe the woman may get angry and it gets out of hand. No. So a wife, if you have something burning in your heart, you need to know when your husband is in his best position, in his best mind, there's no pressure from within or outside. And you, you come to him and say, I have something in my mind. I want us to have a chat. Are you are you ready for this? If he says yes, bring it on. You say it in a nice way that will be a defiant. Be mindful of his feeling. Be mindful of uh, of how the impact on both of you and on your marriage. Be mindful of the outcome. There's no issue, no matter how terrible or how, how hard, that cannot be discussed. It, it depends on how the discussion is made. So we have to be mindful of that. Husbands, also, please, need to study your wife as well. It's not just for the wife to study you. you need to study your wife's strong point, their weakness. What is it that triggers them to become angry, to be upset, to respond aggressively? If you know, if you understand that when they are, if you speak certain ways your wife will get upset you need to change it we are believers we are christians every discussion you hold with any other person should be healthy it should bring joy it should bring peace it should bring encouragement it should be inspiring it should move you forward and move the person forward if it's not going to achieve this don't say it don't say that thing secondly I have noticed something, especially in the UK. Once people do something for another person and they start having little arguments with them, they will tell them what they have done for them. I have done this for you. All of, all of that I have done for you. This is how you are paying me. Stop. Stop. Times. Time and chance happens to them all. You have done very well. By supporting the person, by helping them. 
They don't throw it at their face at every opportunity. It is annoying. And it is ungodly. Time will come, they will reciprocate. Time will come, they will bless you back. Even if they don't bless you back, God will send other people who will bless you. Wives, we need to stop it. Because when the man, yes, you bless the man, you help the man. But when the man starts making the money, they will bless you back. In fact, they will even give you much more. I have seen a lot of people, they, they tell the, they, uh, they, they, they tell the other, you did this, you did this, you did this, you did this for me. Oh, now you need to do this, you need to pay me back. That is wrong. If I pay you back, so it's business we are dealing, doing now, it is partnership. So once I finish paying you back, I, I run away. I move away from you. But if you want your marriage to work, stop that language. It's not godly. Stop throwing it at the person's face. Whether it's your wife that you supported, you helped. Is it not other men buying cars for their wives? Women. There are women who have who have supported their husband, bought cars because God they, they maybe God blessed them financially or with wealth first. But I have seen men who buy houses and give to their wives. So why is it that you give your husband just little blessing and everybody must hear about it? You must throw it at his face every day. Need to stop it. These two things are important. Communication, throwing things at your spouse's face that you have done for them. Give them opportunity to reciprocate. Say words that will build you up. Stop threading words that divide you. Thank you for listening.